In today's video, I'm going to run through my file organization. I think this is pretty good, but um, you can be the judge of that. I'll run through it and you can see how I do it. And hopefully you get some inspiration on how to do your file organization. Let's jump into my screen recording here. I have a new project template file. And so that with every single project, I have the exact same folder structure. So I know where everything is every single time. So of course, let's run through it. We've got exports, that's where all the exports go. Project files, so I work in DaVinci Resolve and Photoshop as well. So this is where I would put my YouTube thumbnail, project files. If I'm gonna keep the DaVinci Resolve project file, I would also put that into here. Footage, kind of speaks for itself. I've got B-roll and stock footage in there. I add extra folders based on the project so sometimes if you know there's other things not just b-roll a-roll so for example in this project i've got here of a memoir video i've got a cam and b cam so one angle two angles if i'm doing podcasts it will sometimes be guest host and wide i find that that helps it be a little bit more organized when i'm looking for for my footage so back into here we have audio so that'd be music sound effects and any microphones that I've used. I normally create a mic folder, graphics, logos, motion graphics, that kind of thing. Testing assets, I think this one's pretty useful. So when I'm going on to say Artlist or Envato Elements, if I'm not sure if a particular asset's going to work, so some stock footage or maybe some audio, I'll put it into this folder I drag it into DaVinci Resolve and I'll test it out in there. I find that it, you know if I do use it and I think it works, I can then drag and organize it into these other folders. So my stock or, or, or B-roll folders. If not, I can just delete it from DaVinci Resolve, come back to it another time. It, I find it's quite nice to keep the project organized and so you don't have too much stock footage going everywhere especially if you're testing out different things to see if you think it will work or if it won't anyway uh stills i normally use this when i've done photography on the shoot or if it's just a photography shoot so coming out i usually put all of the raw photos in here if i'm doing a multi-day shoot then i'll add uh subfolders in there so day one day two etc and admin this is let's say a client sends some pre-edit notes or a storyboard or chapter markers or anything like that I put into this folder even licensing for the music and any assets that I download as well that will all stay in this folder here you'll also see here that I've got a folder for power bins I'll go into that in a separate video I think because I think that my structure for using power bins works pretty well I've not seen anyone else doing it in this way. I'm not saying that my way is the best way, but this works really well for me. And I find it's quite simple to keep on top of where assets are. I don't have to keep relinking them all the time in every single project. So I guess maybe let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and see how I organize my files in there. So here I'm in my YouTube folder within DaVinci Resolve. And again, I've got another project template here. I will sometimes, especially in podcasts or to maintain consistent branding, I will sometimes have templates set up within DaVinci Resolve or folder structures set up in DaVinci Resolve that I always use on every single or 90% plus of edits. So I've created a project template file so I can simply copy and paste it, rename that wherever I want. So video two for YouTube, for example, for this one, may as well set this up now as I'm, as I'm doing it. Oh, actually, let's call it number two folder structure. Let's be productive whilst I'm filming this. Okay, this is normally what I'm presented with. So the reason why I've created a project template is because I always come in and create a bin for timeline and then always create a bin for compound clips. These are two bins I use on every single project. So rather than having to go in and right click and then type in 01 timeline again, it's just already there for me and I don't have to keep doing it. It's just, it's a small bit of time saving, but 
it really makes a difference, I find. Normally, this is on my second monitor. What I'm going to do is highlight footage down to testing assets. So I'm not going to have any stills in this one. And normally, I don't import stills into videos anyway. If I do, I put them under graphics or footage. Anyway, so I'll highlight those, bring them over, hover them above master, and then drop there. And you can see the entire folder structure is imported perfectly. And in here, you'll also see normally all of the video files and audio files, graphics, the lot, it's all exactly in the same order that it, will, that it would be inside this folder structure here. I don't really ever use the media tab. In fact, I think I've got it hidden because I just don't ever use it. I find it's, it's a couple extra steps and you know, I've already done all of the work within the folder structure on the computer anyway. So I don't want to then do it again. It's just double work for no reason. When I'm done with the project and let's say I've now edited and on here you can see a beautiful video, obviously. Let's say that the the exported video is here. You can see it right here. In fact, let's go to this one. Exported video is here. I'll come down. This is why I have two finder or file windows open at once. I'll come down and you can see I've got two archive drives. These are clones of each other. So I'll come into here and let's say personal. I don't have a folder for YouTube yet because this is my second ever video. So let's create one now. I'll come into here. Open up YouTube, YouTube, and then in here, I'll have a folder. Sometimes I just drag it over, but in this instance, I'll type it out. Um, keyboard short cuts. And then I will drag over. I very rarely keep previous um, raw footage or raw files. In this instance, I, maybe I will. So. I've highlighted all of these, I'll drag them over and place them in there. That will then sync up. As we can see, it's gonna take a little bit of time. It's about 55 gigs, 11 minutes. Hello, editor Tristan here. I originally went on a big tangent about a piece of software called ChronoSync that I use to automatically back up my files and sync my hard drives together. However, it's quite a long explanation and I didn't go into enough detail about it and it wasn't very smooth. So I'm gonna create a separate video on that piece of software. It is absolutely incredible and I'll probably actually make it the next video. Yeah, and that this is basically the end of the video. I'll just let past Tristan do the outro. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it really helpful. And I hope that you've got some inspiration as to a folder structure and project file structure. If you have a way of doing it that is better than what I do or a way that you think is better, or maybe I need to rename something, then please just leave your comment in the comments below. And yeah, I hope you have a great day or night.